Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to be making our own mixtures, but more important than actually making the mixtures, we are then going to be figuring out a way how we can separate those mixtures. And we're going to work with your favorite items. Well, at least first up we are, and that is a packet of Smarties and a packet of Woolworths. They call them space rocks. They look a little bit more like Easter eggs. And to make this work, I need an assistant. So I wonder where my son Hayden could be. Whoa, where did you come from? Well, it's good to have you back, Hayden. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a mixture of, as I said, Smarties and Space Rocks. Let's go. You open this packet, I'll open this packet and put it in the vault. So for this experiment, I'm going to see how Hayden separates this mixture of Smarties and Space Rocks. Want one? All right. Let's go. So what's really interesting to see is that Hayden has separated the mixture into Space Rocks and into Smarties, as you can clearly see over here. Hayden? Yeah? Do you think that's the only way we could separate these? No. What's a different way of separating it? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Do you want to try? Yes. How, how can we do this differently? You can separate them by colours. Absolutely. Shall we separate them by colours now? Yeah. Great. So the method of separation that we used here is called hand sorting, where you literally use your hand to separate a mixture. And this mixture was quite easy to separate. But what is interesting about this is that there's more than one way to separate it. And now for the best part. You ready? Yeah. Let's eat. So what happens if you're in the kitchen and you make a tragic mistake? For some reason, your flour gets mixed up with your rice. And we're going to mix this up properly with a spoon over here. Now, I bet whoever's in charge of the kitchen in your house is not going to be very happy with you for making a rice and flour mixture. But you're in luck because there's another separation technique that you can use to separate the flour and the rice. And that is called a sieve. Well done, buddy. Right, so let's separate the flour and the rice. We need a bowl. We need a sieve, pull this through the sieve. You can clearly see the rice and the flour has been separated. And look at that, you're in luck. Nothing but rice left. Although I would pour that back into the bowl a little bit better than I just did. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. So what happens if you're playing nicely in your sandpit and your clumsy dad comes along who is holding a handful of nails, trips and the nails go everywhere in the sand. And then those nails get covered in your sandpit. You now have a mixture of sand and nails. How on earth are you going to get them out? Well, you can use your hands, but there is a faster method. A magnet. And there we go. We can use a magnet to separate a mixture that contains magnetic materials and non-magnetic materials. So we have, in a mere few seconds, separated the metal, which is the screws, from the sand. So the next mixture we're going to make is that of salt water, which obviously all you need is a little bit of water. And in this case, probably quite a lot of salt. Now hopefully I won't get into trouble for using all that salt, but because it's a mixture, stir it and let that salt dissolve in the water. So this method of separation is a little bit more difficult than the others. We can't separate this using our hands, we can't separate this using a sieve, nor using a magnet. So what we're going to do is we're going to use nature, and that is the heat of the sun. You can actually use your oven as well, but I'm going to go the good old traditional method. 
So what I suggest is get a flat bottom dish like this, because the greater surface area something has, the quicker evaporation takes place. And take your mixture of salt water and place it into your flat bottom dish and take it outside and leave it for the sun for the rest of the day. So we'll leave this here for a few hours and wait for the water to evaporate. And hopefully what will be left behind is some salt. We'll check this out shortly. So 24 hours later, all the water has evaporated from our salt water mixture and all we left with is salt. This salt is perfect for my hand. So some of you might be wondering, it's all very well that we separated the salt water mixture, but what happened to the water? Well, that water evaporated and it's lost to us. But there is a way that we can capture that water and that is called distillation. And essentially, it is us catching the water vapor, cooling it down, allowing it to condense and collecting that condensed water in the form of pure water. In fact, that's what happens when we collect salt water and we get fresh water from it. That process is known as desalination, but it's also a form of distillation. We will show you how this is done using a Liebex condenser when we get back to glass. So the next experiment we're going to do is, can we separate the pigments that make up the mixture black? And not only black, we're gonna try some different colors too. So what do you need? Well, you need a water soluble pen, some filter paper from your dad's coffee machine, and some water. Let's get started. Cut the filter paper into equal sized strips and near the bottom of each strip make a small dot using the different colors you have. I have used press stick to hold each strip of paper up and have placed a glass dish below which I'll fill with water. It is important that the water only touches the bottom of the filter paper. This water will be drawn up by the filter paper and this is called capillary action. Pigments are special substances that give ink colour. Some pigments dissolve more easily than others. Those that dissolve easily travel further up the filter paper. Less soluble pigments travel a shorter distance as they separate more easily. We can now tell which pigments make up the colours of the cokey pens that we have chosen. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week for another lesson.